Here with more. In the meantime, Mark Thiessen, former speechwriter for President George W. Bush and a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, and Mo Alethi, founding executive director of Georgetown University's Institute of Politics. Both are Fox News contributors. Gentlemen, welcome. You've been such a great stalwarts for us throughout the course of this, so we thank you thank very you. much for being here. Um, Mark, let me ask you, the action that we've seen tonight, your thoughts? Uh, it's really stupid to be blocking these nominees. I mean, think about what American people are watching on their television screens today. They saw 67 Democratic congressmen boycott the president's inauguration. They see riots and fires in the streets of D.C. And now they see that the Democrats in the Senate are blocking most of Donald Trump's cabinet members in the first hours of his presidency. When Barack Obama was uh, inaugurated, seven cabinet members were approved on the first day. And so this is this is just a stupid fight to pick because, number one, they don't have the power to actually block these nominees because they invoke what's called the nuclear option, which means they can't filibuster them. So it's a senseless fight. Every one of these people is going to get confirmed. So why create the perception to the American people that you're obstructing Donald Trump when he was just inaugurated, especially when they lost all these voters in the middle of America who voted twice for Barack Obama and now voted for Donald Trump? And the message is we're going to obstruct the guy you chose. Why? So answer that question. Why would well, they do it? First of all, the comparison to the Obama uh, when uh, Obama came in is a little off. There was one big difference. And that was President Obama had done everything he needed to do during the transition period in terms of filing the paperwork and uh, all the ethics forms for all of his nominees. You know, Donald I heard Trump, about that, though, that, that, you know, it was the Obama administration. The paperwork was in, but they didn't process it, didn't get it out there. So, you know, I think when American people, I think when they hear that stuff, they go, oh, come on. Well, you I, know, I, well, I mean, let's move beyond that. This is why I disagree. Okay. Because Donald Trump ran on a promise to drain the swamp, to clean up Washington. But he's not putting forward not just his tax returns, but he's not putting forward the requisite, you know, paperwork that we need in order to fully vet these cabinet nominees. We saw two people who were fully vetted make it through the process tonight with overwhelming support. No one was complaining about that. But what we've learned with some of these nominees or some of these appointees who haven't been properly vetted is information is starting to trickle out. Right, Tom Price, who's now there are some questions about whether or not he engaged in insider trading. You've got the uh, OMB director where there are questions about why he didn't pay for household uh, employees. That same violation, by the way, derailed you, but, the but nomination. Let me ask you this, though. I, I, I get what you're saying, and if that's a concern on some of these people's parts, and we know that those people have provided their answers on those questions, um, but are you concerned when you heard that speech today about the establishment and the money that is made in politics and that those days are over, that you are feeding into that notion with what's happening with these appointments? Well, one, I think the president elects, or the president, excuse me, so also getting used to that. Yep. The president's speech today was a very good speech for his supporters, right? But remember, he also took that oath of office today with historically low approval ratings. The American people writ large, the, the jury's still out is probably a generous way to describe the landscape, the political environment that the president faces as he takes office. Uh, it was a scathing indictment on the establishment. I don't think very many people are going to have a problem with that. But I think what Democrats are doing are pointing out that a lot of his nominees, a lot of his actions, his inability to withdraw his uh, from his own business entirely actually is completely antithetical to what he said today. Quick thought, Mark. We gotta I, go. I think the bigger issue here about these nominees is are the, the tape. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sure. going to jump in. The tape that we were. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, keep going. Finish okay. the thought. I think the bigger issue are is are the Democrats going to follow a policy of obstruction with Donald Trump? They, they, you, you have a American people, 20, to, uh, five states that voted twice for Obama, now voted for Trump. But they're going to say, they well, Republicans did it to us, no, so now it's our turn. Well, gotcha. We don't have time to go through the history of that, but that's not true. Um, but, uh, but, 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 no, here's the thing. The, the Democrats now are defending 25 seats in 2018, including 10 Democrats in states that Donald Trump won overwhelmingly. Do they want to put those people into the position of having to be the obstructionist to Donald Trump? Is Chuck Schumer going to make them vote to obstruct Trump's agenda and lose their Senate seat so that Trump can have a 60-vote uh, majority in the Senate and be able to uh, overcome filibusters on anything? Or is he going to do the smart thing, which is to say, in, in Donald Trump, I know Donald Trump, I've worked with Donald Trump, in areas where we agree he, I'm going to be his best ally, where we disagree, we'll see if we can find common ground, and if not, let the democratic process play it out. That would be the smart message from the Democrats. But if you're going to say obstruct, 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 the American people are going to get very frustrated I, I, very I, fast. 
I agree with you that that is a smart message, right? I'm going to work with him where I can, not as and I'm not going to work with him where it doesn't make sense. How come sense. that's not what we're hearing from Chuck Schumer? Well, yeah. I think you are hearing that from a lot of Democrats, right? You are hearing but a lot Schumer of Democrats is the saying, new I'm going to work you know, like for him. Brown is the new He's black, and, and Schumer yeah, is the new read. He's but, the new but again, I go back to the point that overwhelmingly the American people are not necessarily behind his agenda yet. Trump supporters are very, very give passionate. Him a chance. And, and, and I think a lot of people are going to give him a I think there are going to be a lot of, I think a lot of people are going to give him a chance. But I do think that raising these questions, that where there are so many questions about whether or not his actions are flying in the face of what he promised to do during the campaign, what he said he was going to do today, uh, you know, that's that, that's actually good. But politics. I think, you know, pe people look at Tom Price for, Tom Price, for example, and we know that there's a lot of unsettled feeling about Obamacare out there. We know that the premiums that that came in so much higher in November, maybe the most central issue to why Donald Trump won when people started to see sure. the numbers and what it was going to cost them for health care. And then they see this obstruction and this discussion about whether or not this independently managed fund was, you know, making stock investments that went against, you know, what he was disclosing. They say, you know, I, I, you know, just just bring my but, premiums but, down. But that's a perfect example, Martha. So Donald Trump actually agrees with the Democrats on a lot. He's not an ideologue. He's a deal maker. And so if Chuck Schumer were to go and say what I just said and say, I'm going to work with him on these things where we agree on trade, we agree on infrastructure spending, we agree a lot on health care, Donald Trump's going to work with the Democrats. They can get a lot done on trade, on, on health care, on immigration. They can preserve parts of Obamacare uh, if, they, if they're willing to go along with the repeal and replace plan. If they approach Donald Trump, not with obstruction, but with an open hand and say, let's work together until it doesn't work, then one, it's a better message. And two, they can get a lot done. But it seems they care less about getting things done than stopping Donald Trump. And the message they're sending today is fire in the streets, stop him at all costs, don't That's accept his legitimacy, don't accept his legitimacy, don't show up at the inauguration. That is a really, really bad message for the Democrats to be sending. Mark, you know as well as I do, you cannot blame congressional Democrats for what it's we saw in this I, I'm okay? told the tape is actually about to oh, okay. There we go. Hey, there it is. Bingo. Thanks.